I have a question about Daredevil. Is everything that happened on the Netflix series a part of the sacred timeline or is it not? So I can say that we've been, we've been up until this point, we've been a little bit cagey about what's sacred timeline, what's not sacred timeline. So Marvel Studios has actually went out publicly and confirmed something pretty crazy. And the reason they are doing this is because Marvel Studios is essentially starting kind of a new corner of the MCU. They are bringing out a new style of content that is going to exist on Disney Plus that is both connected to the MCU, is MCU canon, but also exists in its own realm, and that is the Marvel Spotlight banner. Now, many of you have probably heard that characters like the Punisher are returning. We're going to see John Bernthal return as Frank Castle, aka the Punisher, in the Daredevil series, Daredevil Born Again. And one of the biggest questions that Marvel fans have had really since the MCU and the Netflix Marvel series have existed at the same time and especially now since we are getting the same actors playing the same characters from the Netflix series now entering the MCU the biggest question is are these characters the same did the Netflix series shows the Marvel shows on Netflix take place in the MCU are they canon are they connected or not because it does get kind of confusing when you see that Charlie Cox is now in the MCU playing Matt Murdock aka Daredevil and Vinny D'Onofrio is also in the MCU now playing the same character he played in the Netflix series Daredevil playing Kingpin once again well good news for Marvel fans because a Marvel Studios executive in fact pretty much the most important person at Marvel Studios who could confirm this really did confirm it, with the exception of Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios. But essentially, we have an official confirmation from Brad Winderbaum in a recent interview for the upcoming show Echo, where he was recently asked specifically about the Netflix series and if they are a part of the sacred timeline or not, in which he did confirm they were. And he said that he himself could personally confirm this. We'll dive into this and why it is such a huge deal in this video. But if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest MCU videos. And if you subscribe and leave a comment, you are automatically entered in our giveaway for a chance to win a PS5, an Xbox Series X, some Marvel Legends items or DC items. The winner picks one item and we pick one winner at the end of every single month. So again, this confirmation is coming from Brad Winderbem, and he is the right person to confirm this. He is the head of Marvel Studios TV animation and streaming. So basically he is the guy behind Disney Plus. He's the main man behind all of the content that gets produced for Disney Plus. He is basically the Kevin Feige of the TV side of the MCU right now. If there's anybody to confirm this, it is him. And he does confirm this in an interview with Screen Rant when talking about Echo. In the interview, they talk about the Marvel Spotlight banner, how that's going to be kind of a different vessel for Marvel Studios content. And we'll talk about that more in this video as well, because this really is going to be a different way for Marvel Studios to produce content that I believe is going to be very, very good. But first of of course, let's dive into Brad Winderbaum confirming that the Marvel Netflix series are canon to the sacred timeline of the MCU. So as I mentioned, this is a Screen Rant interview hosted by Joe Duckelmeyer interviewing Brad Winderbaum. And there's a scene in one of the episodes of Echo where Daredevil fights Echo. And this we knew. We knew Daredevil was going to be a part of the Echo series in some way, shape, or form, more than just a tiny little cameo. But we know that he is going to go up against Echo and the fight scene is going to be incredible. I've personally seen it and it's pretty awesome. So he goes on to ask if everything that happened on the Netflix series is a part of the sacred timeline or is it not? And here is exactly what Brad said and we'll play a clip from the interview as well. But he started off by stating, so I can say that up until this point, we've been a little bit cagey about what's sacred timeline and what's not. That was born, frankly, out of a period at the studio where we were like, we have to stick the landing with the Avengers. It was another part of the company developing the Netflix stuff. We were aware of what they were doing. They were aware of what we were doing, but it was a lot. It was a lot to balance anyways. But now that some time has passed, now that we actually see how well integrated the stories are, I personally, Brad Winderbaum, will confidently say that they are part of the sacred timeline. And I'll play that clip of him saying that here. Um, I think that I personally, Brad Winderbaum, 
would be confident in saying it is part of the sacred time. So as you can see here, they officially confirm that at least Daredevil is a part of the sacred timeline, the MCU's sacred timeline. I say Daredevil because they specifically asked about the Daredevil Netflix series, and he specifically responded about the Daredevil Netflix series. However, we could probably assume that most of the Netflix Marvel series that were put out are indeed a part of the MCU sacred timeline. The reason we could assume that is because, once again, John Bernthal, who played the Punisher on the Netflix series, is going to be in the MCU. He's going to be in the Daredevil series as the exact same character, Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, interacting with a character that he's interacted with before. So if this is the same Daredevil from the Netflix series, then this is the same Punisher from the Punisher series. And the relationship that they had before is going to be the same that they had on Netflix. And I think this is a giant win for many, many MCU fans who watched The Punisher and Daredevil. And also, not to mention, we have heard that Jessica Jones could be appearing in the MCU as well. Well, apparently she was supposed to appear in the Daredevil series, but unfortunately Kristen Ritter had some scheduling conflicts and could not appear, but insiders say that she is supposed to return, or I should say debut, in the MCU. Now are all the characters from Netflix going to be canon? We're unsure about that. Luke Cage, Iron Fist, we're not 100% sure, but at this point in time, Marvel Studios has confirmed Daredevil, Kingpin, and we are assuming the Punisher as well are canon to the MCU timeline, which is awesome. Now, what's interesting is that Vinny D'Onofrio did recently confirm that Daredevil, the upcoming MCU show Daredevil, will be under the Marvel Spotlight banner as well. Echo is the first show to be under this banner, and it's the first MCU show to be TV mature. But basically, what this means is, and Brad Winderbaum said this in the interview as well, he said, you don't need to know what happened with Thanos to watch the Echo series, and the same thing is going to go for the Daredevil series. And this could be very refreshing to a lot of people, especially if you are not a hardcore Marvel MCU fan who doesn't want to watch every single project that has come out to understand what is going on. This is a breath of fresh air. However, at the same time, these events, these shows that take place under the Marvel Spotlight banner are still canon to the MCU. They are still happening inside the MCU, but they are kind of story that are taking place on the side that you can enjoy on their own. However, at the same time, the characters and the stories that take place during the shows that are released under the Spotlight banner are still going to bleed into the MCU in a good way. The stories might not necessarily affect what is happening overall in the MCU, but the characters that are introduced will appear in other events, at least some of the characters. For example, we've already seen Echo and Daredevil in other projects. Echo, of course, was in Hawkeye and Daredevil was in She-Hulk. Now, you don't need to know what happened in Hawkeye to watch Echo. They do a good job at basically explaining and recapping. And I'm assuming you really don't need to know what happened with Daredevil and She-Hulk to understand what's going to happen in Daredevil Born Again. However, Kingpin, who was also in Hawkeye, is going to be a big part of the street-level Avengers team moving forward, and they confirmed this in this interview. Brad Winderbaum basically stated that Kingpin is going on to be kind of a big bad of the street-level Avengers team. So even though Kingpin is existing in these stories that are kind of one off under the Marvel Spotlight banner, he is still going to go on to play a huge part of the MCU. The same thing goes with Daredevil. We know he's going to be a part of Spider Man. So basically, you don't really need to watch Daredevil Born Again to know what's going to happen in the next Spider Man film if Daredevil appears. But at the same time, you're going to get a really killer show with Daredevil Born Again. At least, we hope. Fingers crossed. And I think this is a great sign overall from Marvel Studios. They are realizing that there are people out there who don't want to watch so much content all the time. Marvel Studios and Disney have already admitted they put out too much content. It got oversaturated and the quality they admitted did drop and they are going to scale back on the content that they are producing. And before they were doing special presentations, but I personally like the idea of Marvel Spotlight a little bit better. I've talked about this before, but I believe that these projects are going to be right in the sweet spot when it comes to 
introducing new characters or telling one-off stories. Let's take Ghost Rider or Nova or the Silver Surfer for example. These characters have amazing stories and perhaps a special presentation that's about 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half long, might not do the characters justice. However, Marvel Studios might not want them to have six to nine episodes for a Disney Plus project. Well, doing a limited series under the Marvel Spotlight banner would be a great way to introduce these characters because that way you don't need to know anything about what has happened with them or anybody they're associated with beforehand, but you know they'll go on to become a bigger part of the MCU. I think this is a great step in the right direction for Marvel Studios, and I'm really, really excited now that they have confirmed that at least Daredevil and the Punisher, those events that happened in the Netflix series, are canon to the MCU's sacred timeline. But let us know what you think about this in the comments down below. Are you excited about this? Do you not like it? Put all your feelings down below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest MCU news. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter as well. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.